So sorry again for for this uh, for this delay. Um, I'll try to give an overview um, on uh, some of the aspects that we have uh, uh, discussed and brought forward uh, in the working group sustainability on uh, ES governance and the structure uh, together with the colleagues in the executive board um, and of course uh, with uh, the other with the colleagues in, in the governance board uh, as well and the commission. So um, just to lose not too much time, um, I would like to, um, I mean, everybody is aware uh, about uh, the, 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 um, the momentum that we have in, in, in the EOSC um, with uh, the president of the commission uh, launching uh, and mentioning EOSC very prominently in the World Economic Forum in Davos and most recently also uh, in relation to the COVID data platform uh, activities. Um, the AI you know, Sustainability Working Group has, uh, since mid last year, uh, we work, we had our first uh, uh, live meeting uh, in July, very actively working, uh, been working on uh, various aspects around um, analyzing um, and, and providing strategic, legal, and financial recommendations uh, for the EOS post 2020. Uh, so, focusing on business models, um, on um, the potential uh, legal entities, um, the governance framework, and, and a couple of uh, and analyzing also uh, regulatory um, and, and policy uh, barriers that uh, that could uh, that could be an issue uh, for for launching EOS. Um, so I'm leading you through a couple of um, uh, stuff that we have uh, that we have been this uh, that we have been uh, able to to bring forward. Um, we have uh, several. We had several rounds of uh, of a document um, regarding analyzing the, um, the, the 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 financial environment and, and the sustainability environment of the future EOS uh, with a series of documents, um, starting from a Storman document that we have uh, pushed through a consultation together with. Um, the various uh, EOS projects, uh, the governance board, the executive board, the working groups have asked for feedback, uh, consolidated that feedback uh, that was back in 2019 in September uh, when it was first uh, made available. We have uh, iterated and uh, included this feedback into a, a next level document we call the Tinman document. Again, push that through a, a consultation uh, process um, and this uh, together with additional um, uh, input that we will bring on board uh, from a number of studies uh, and their evaluation, uh, we will integrate this feedback uh, further down the line in an, uh, a document uh, we would call and propose to call the Iron Lady. Uh, with the appropriate uh, recommendations, uh, you will be able to see um, and to access uh, all this documentation um, from Strawman, uh, Tinman, and the feedback that we received uh, on the link uh, that you can see uh, on the slide below. Uh, with this document, uh, we provide, we, we propose uh, the recommendations for sustainability and uh, in particular business models, legal entity uh, options, governance and national policy issues. As I said, um, we are following or proposing to that uh, ESC uh, will be put together following an iterative approach um, and a gradual growth. Uh, starting from a minimum viable EOSC um, and uh, will enable a federation of existing and planned research data infrastructures plus additional uh, services uh, for initially for the, pun the public funded uh, research sector and then further would allow iterations uh, to include additional services such as the public sector and uh, the industry. Um, a key goal um, of the EOSC uh, beyond 2020 um, is, of course, uh, to shift um, the goal uh, of EOSC uh, from research uh, to, to research enterprise in Europe uh, towards an, an, open, uh, an open research model. Um, as the primary stakeholders uh, the, uh, of EOSC, uh, we, are, we are seeing clearly the researchers as the end users. Uh, the service providers, um, as well as uh, research funders, member states and associated countries and the European Commission. And of course, uh, there will be, there, there are more. Um, as I 
as I highlighted, um, we are proposing that this grows across a series of iterations. Um, and I see uh, this is being taken up uh, also by the other working group uh, and, and also by the partnership uh, proposal that uh, we will have a chance to, to discuss further in a couple of minutes um, uh, from, from, various, uh, from, from various angles. Um, by adding more uh, subsequently uh, uh, more functionality and services uh, to widening to widening uh, the user base, as uh, as I mentioned before. So um, we are proposing to start from an MVE, the minimum viable EOSC, um, and that includes three main uh, three main fields. Uh, basically, the EOSC core, um, which I will highlight uh, on the next slide, um, the federated data. Um, that uh, so the, the EOS core will enable uh, to federate uh, the fair data sets, and then um, an uh, additional um, set of services um, we call EOS Exchange uh, that will include uh, the higher level and thematic services uh, to work with uh, these federated and fair data sets. So the MBE um, will allow the federation of existing and planned uh, data infrastructures. Um, it will connect uh, disciplinary infrastructures and research data to allow and to enable cross-disciplinary research. And uh, it will hopefully provide uh, mechanisms to federate uh, disciplinary clusters and uh, regional pro uh, projects as a first uh, critical uh, step. And to begin with, uh, it, we, will, uh, we will most likely see uh, simple use cases um, starting from openly accessible FAIR data. In terms of the core functions um, um, that are that are proposed, um, it will it means it will on the logical side it will provide uh, it will um, uh, include um, and provide the means to discover, share, access, and reuse data and services. But it will not store or transfer. Uh, it will not store the. It will not provide the services to store, um, transfer, or to process uh, data. Uh, it should be used as wide uh, as widely as possible, and uh, will only um, accessible be accessible to authenticated users uh, to promote um, open research across um, across Europe. Um, I'm not sure to which extent this has been mentioned uh, during the morning, but uh, the proposed coverage will um, ex include a number of uh, horizontal uh, services. So a basic uh, SYN layer um, that, uh, that will allow the federation of data, including, for, in, uh, for, for example, AI, um, uh, PID services, uh, um, uh, and help desk functions, um, and a couple of more as, uh, as uh, uh, outlined here on, on the slides, but I don't want to go uh, further into detail here. Um, there are proposed uh, second or third level iterations uh, that will allow uh, extension of these services to provide to serve the public sector and the industry, hopefully. Um, and uh, that uh, could probably build on initial use cases, for example, from the educational or, or subservation sector. Ideally, um, all of those uh, would fit into one uh, in one common marketplace. Um, but we appreciate and, and realize that uh, very likely differing requirements and le legislation uh, might require might require. Um, uh, alternatively governed spaces. I think it is clear um, and everybody uh, will appreciate that this will not happen over time and that will um, a very careful assembly of the different uh, building blocks uh, to be put together um, and uh, will of course happen uh, during, during, uh, during a, com a number of years. Um, but initially, as we said, uh, we would like to start, uh, we would like to propose to start uh, from the MVE um, and then subsequently will grow um, to, the, to, the wider, to the wider areas as, uh, as mentioned. Um, in terms of the um, Iron Lady, um, the, the document that we push through these uh, various iterations, um, uh, the timeline will look like um, that we are currently working uh, and we have a task force working on that 
um, Bob Jones is with us and, and probably can, can share more, more if there's questions. Um, we are currently proposed, uh, we are currently working on integrating feedback uh, that we received uh, from, uh, from the Tinman document and uh, in the consultation. Um, the second uh, draft will be uh, put together um, towards June, uh, where we will um, integrate also a com a comp uh, additional content from the uh, EOS partnership proposal and uh, further um, uh, uh, content from uh, from the governance and, and legal entity um, discussions and uh, and uh, input uh, that that is currently going on and the third draft uh, will build on uh, studies uh, on in the area of the EOS core operational cost uh, that is ongoing and maybe um, uh, afterwards uh, Lydia can share a little bit more on this as well. Um, in, in addition to this, there will be uh, input uh, from the ongoing um, uh, assembly of the SRIA, the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda, um, and, and roadmap documents, um, and uh, of course uh, the input from the uh, very uh, from the valuable working uh, uh, work of the Rules of Participation Working Group. Um, there's additional uh, um, studies on, uh, going on in the, uh, on risk management, uh, which will feed uh, the final draft that will be uh, that will be put together towards September um, this year, and also bring on board um, a high-level um, uh, and further analysis uh, on preparedness uh, from uh, that is building on the landscaping uh, analysis. Uh, from the landscaping working group and also here we have a task force that is working on this and in terms of official publication we are looking at uh, october um, bringing on board additional feedback by the executive board and the governance board um, we hope so um, in terms of the studies um, that i mentioned uh, that i mentioned before um, we can probably briefly say um, there has, there is uh, additional legal advice uh, being uh, is, is brought on board uh, under this on the ongoing um, discussions and work of the legal entity task force, which I will highlight uh, a little bit more in a minute. Um, and uh, we have uh, we are in, in working with a CMS, a law firm uh, that uh, is, is contracted by the uh, secretariat. And working now with the legal entities task force from within the working group, um, we are working on a costing exercise to um, determine the operational costs of uh, the EOS core. Uh, together with a company, with two companies called uh, Across Limits and Boundary Less, uh, that are that were selected via an open call. Um, and again, uh, Lydia might uh, share a couple of thoughts uh, afterwards. Um, we are providing, um, we are carrying out a risk assessment. Um, we are uh, a company called AON Habit uh, that uh, has been selected uh, via co creation activities. Uh, additional studies um, are currently um, proposed and, and uh, in, in the queue. Um, one will um, focus on uh, AS, on AS exchange, uh, basically the market, marketplace for public and commercial pro uh, uh, service providers, and um, to will um, study and, and determine the business models uh, uh, for participation, access, risk, and uh, opportunities in within uh, AS exchange. And towards broadening uh, the EOSC um, and the engagement of uh, wider uh, uh, of other sectors, including the public and private sectors in EOSC, um, there will be an additional study, and uh, one could be uh, one, one additional study uh, has uh, also been uh, proposed to look at uh, long-term data preservation roles and responsibilities. Um, these uh, the focus for for these studies has also been uh, supported uh, by the feedback uh, that we received from within uh, the Tinman uh, feedback. So that's that's basically the the main driver of uh, of, of these studies. Um, I think it has been discussed earlier um, that EASC uh, is looking uh, towards establishing. 
a co-programmed uh, partnership uh, together with the European Commission. And uh, it has been become clear. Um, I mean, this that's a, that's a slide that uh, is already a couple of um, months old already. So that uh, the, together with the governance board, uh, the, the governance board has endorsed uh, to work uh, towards a, a co-partment uh, partnership on the horizon Europe together with the Commission. Um, and uh, seeing this as an effective uh, business case uh, for the member states to support EASC and also to um, to decide uh, the, um, and, uh, the, the nature of the relationship with the Commission. Um, to have to to allow this uh, this uh, uh, co-broker partnership uh, to become uh, alive uh, it requires a legal entity to be established uh, this is an essential uh, requirement uh, for the funding to uh, flow through the partnership in horizon europe and uh, it also became clear that the legal entity uh, would need to become operational before the end of 2020 so that the partnership agreements together with the Commission uh, can be signed um, uh, and uh, govern the EOSC from uh, January next year on, uh, onwards. It has been proposed uh, and was recommended that the format uh, for the legal vehicle uh, would be an AISBL, which is an international association without uh, lucrative uh, purpose. And the common in, in the uh, next couple of slides, I'm uh, going to uh, let you know a little bit uh, where the current uh, discussions stand and, and uh, what is the progress on, uh, on trying to put this together and to setting this up. Um, here we see a, a graph, uh, a graphics representation of the timelines, uh, of some of the timelines that are involved of setting up this uh, legal entity that is a result from the calendar report and, and other studies uh, that was involved in, in our work that has uh, influenced our, our work of course um, if we keep in mind that uh, towards the end so that this in december um, the legal entity needs to be uh, operational um, it is clear that we are going through uh, and have to go through a very very tight skeleton of, of timelines and, and uh, milestones uh, to really make possible that uh, we have for instance a uh, first general assembly in, in september uh, that we have appropriate uh, statutes, bylaws, uh, um, investigations on VAT statutes, translation of statutes, uh, so that uh, the, the, the founding members in the end uh, can go to the notary and, uh, and, uh, and establish uh, this, uh, this association. Um, so the red circle um, highlights where we are staying uh, right and where we are right now in, in this process. Uh, we are currently working on uh, the drafting and putting together the statutes um, and uh, have the various discussions uh, with the governance board, the executive board, um, and uh, a number of candidate founding members that have been proposed um, by the governance board and the executive board um, to help with this. Um, in terms of how this co-program partnership um, would look like uh, and would and could look like, um, if we look, uh, if we see on the on the slide on the left hand side, uh, the European Commission is one partner of this contractual arrangement, uh, which is a memorandum of understanding. And on the other side, uh, we see the EASC Association that will be actually this AIS, AISBL uh, that is uh, going to be put uh, in into into place. Um, those are the, the the initial partner of the so called initially bipartite uh, arrangement uh, as it has been proposed uh, as, 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 this, uh, as this partnership. Um, we are seeing, um, we, are, we, are, we are also seeing um, a strategic role um, uh, of a um, so-called strategy board that will represent uh, the member states and associated countries. Uh, which not only will have an advisory role, um, as indicated by the, uh, by the blue line, um, uh, to the EOSC Association, uh, but also within the so-called tree pipe tight arrangement, um, will send representatives uh, to a you know, partnership board. Actually, the partnership board is uh, the, the forum 
that consists that would is initially consist of the European Commission and representatives of the European Commission and the executive board um, and in the tripartite arrangement as currently proposed um, and uh, very likely to happen um, there will be additional representatives uh, by the strategy board um, to set the, the policy um, and, and, and strategic framework uh, for this uh, partnership. Um, it should also be highlighted that within the, um, the partnership, um, there is on the one hand side, the commission uh, providing the funding through the, uh, through the work program. And on the other side, there is uh, there, there will be seen contributions by the member states, associated countries, and or other stakeholders um, in terms of data and services. And most of those uh, will, of course, will happen um, in kind uh, as it as it is proposed now. If we look at the if we look at the the various um, aspects of uh, of what actually the um, the legal entity um, will consist of, we see um, a general assembly and the executive board and executive board director. I will come to this in a minute. Uh, we see that here on the left hand side as well. Um, if we if we focus on um, if we focus on what are the main tasks of uh, this of the ERS association um, besides the office functions, help desk, and uh, other functions in terms of uh, um, settings and, and working with the community on, on setting the standards. The main one of the main uh, the, the major activities of this uh, ASS association will um, to shape and to help co-create uh, the draft work program um, and then put an, uh, or more uh, precisely the um, the strategic research and innovation agenda uh, together with the European Commission, which then will be pushed uh, through the um, uh, through the uh, comitology uh, po uh, uh, through the comit uh, comitology process of the European Commission, and then uh, will result uh, in a work program, and uh, will then most uh, will then uh, be able to fund uh, projects uh, that carry out uh, certain functions and, and will um, enable to provide uh, a number of uh, services from within, from within the uh, different areas that uh, that we have proposed uh, earlier, uh, being that uh, the, those uh, involved in the AS core, so the horizontal layer of the SIN services, or um, in the AS exchange area, the, the somatic services um, and high level services uh, working on, on the FAIR data. So um, we see there is an indirect, uh, a pretty indirect role of, uh, of, the, of the AS association. Initially, the AS association will not be able um, to, I mean, will, will not have uh, um, a large budget um, to, to provide uh, services on its own. So um, the most, most of the services uh, we see being provided through the, the various uh, projects uh, that, that are funded uh, through the work program. There might be, however, um, doing a grow while the, the association grows, uh, the, also the association budget will grow, and then there might be um, further chance for the opportunities uh, to fund uh, to fund or to provide services uh, through the through the organization. Um, as I highlighted before, the timelines um, are quite tight. Uh, we are working on uh, the draft uh, statutes um, here, and uh, in terms of understanding the statutes, it is. Um... Can you still hear me? Yes, we can still hear you. Okay, I, I just received a note that maybe there were there were issues. Please let me know if there's, there's anything. Um, okay, so in terms of putting together the, the statutes, um, I think this has been, and, and that's a discussion that is currently ongoing. Um, we should probably briefly mention the, the rationale for, for the for the approach. Uh, the time the tight uh, time scales um, have been mentioned. Um, it has to be understood also that uh, the AISBL provides an opportunity 
um, to have a quite um, lean framework of uh, statutes and uh, to cover the detail in the bylaws, uh, it needs to be understood that um, within this uh, construct, uh, changing the statutes which much, is much more difficult uh, than uh, changing the bylaws, which is, uh, which is something that, that can more easily happen uh, from within uh, uh, decision making in the General Assembly. Um, in terms of the partnership, uh, the association uh, should cater for both uh, the tripartite or a bilateral um, uh, arrangement, uh, as I uh, tried to highlight early on. And uh, we are um, making efforts to accommodate both, uh, um, both of these eventualities. In terms of maturity, uh, we have to assume that, uh, of course, um, starting from a useful uh, um, uh, association um, that, of course, builds on uh, decades of, uh, of experience and, uh, in e in e infrastructures, uh, data infrastructures, and services, um, but still will be able uh, will will grow and, uh, and and we need to build in this this flexibility in the organization. Um, in terms of membership, um, also, uh, we need to make sure that it is an open uh, process, as open as possible, and that it allows us uh, to, allows EASC to grow as fast as possible and, uh, and as wide as possible. Um, and also, um, in terms of uh, categorization, uh, we should foresee mechanisms so that we balance the influence of uh, individual uh, in individual organizations or individual categories of organizations so that there is uh, a balance uh, a, a useful uh, um, useful and appropriate balance across the organization being able to represent um, all of the the individual stakeholders in terms of influence uh, we understand that uh, there needs to be appropriate appropriateness uh, in the voting uh, regime of course um, but also have the ability to allow the member states who are um, very the very important stakeholders of the EOSC in terms of their contribution um, uh, so that uh, we allow uh, so-called mandated organizations to play an important role in the this strategic decision making um, of this uh, of this association so um, we are, um, as I said be, uh, before, uh, we are working on the statutes that will cover the minimum uh, information required uh, for the legal setup of the association. And uh, as, as the statutes are difficult to amend and the finer details will be, um, will be put in, into the bylaws. Um, and can be amended uh, by the General Assembly of, uh, of uh, of the association without any legal intervention. Um, the governance board have highlighted uh, membership as, uh, and, and voting as their key areas of, of concern. So we are uh, providing clarity so that this uh, area is, uh, it is, is, is gaining their, their approval and we are actively working with them. The minimum of founding members, we have been uh, advised by, uh, by professional legal advice, uh, is set up uh, to three. Um, and uh, at the current moment, a large number of founding members is uh, discouraged uh, to, due to the practical practicalities uh, and timelines, which does not prevent, I mean, this, this is of course not, uh, this, this does not of course uh, mean that there is a barrier um, for uh, members uh, to join the association very, very early. Um, so we have to, um, we have to see um, if the, the process uh, of founding members going to the notary happens uh, in this, uh, during this summer, um, there will be time uh, towards uh, the first general assembly um, and also the, the mechanisms that are put in place uh, with the statutes uh, will allow um, to uh, for for members to join uh, at a very early stage and, and very rapidly so that we can allow uh, the um, the association to grow. It is, however, very very important uh, that we bring together at least these three members, and uh, it looks like it it will be more 
uh, right now um, so that the association actually uh, turns into life and uh, and can as i said before uh, uh, can can sign the the memorandum of understanding um, the, the, associate, the association and organization should be able to grow and as, uh, as flexible and, uh, and fast as possible. And uh, it is clear that the founding members uh, will not have any greater or different rights than, than any other members. And as I said uh, earlier on, that will have, uh, there will be a chance uh, for, for others to join very, very early. And that's, that's a basic principle. In terms of governance, um, there will be a, a general assembly with a vice, with a president and a vice president. The supreme, it will represent the supreme authority of the association. Um, one uh, uh, representative for for every member, and uh, it will be res uh, responsible for high level decisions. The executive board, um, the executive board uh, will have a um, uh, the executive board. Uh, will be represented uh, by, by a chair and a vice chair. And we, we are looking probably like uh, for five to nine members um, to be uh, voted in by the General Assembly and as a delegated authority for running the day-to-day -day business um, and an executive uh, director supported by a, by, a sec by a secretary. The steering board as proposed in the three-partite uh, uh, arrangement uh, will and should remain outside of the AS Association to enable it to be composed of ministries and their representatives. Um, in terms of the different members and observers, um, we see that the members would could come from EU member states, um, associated countries and candidate countries. Um, um, they will pay a variable fee and can vote. Um, and uh, there will be also observers without any geographical uh, limits who will pay a, a small and flat fee and cannot vote. Um, there is a proposal to have certain categories to allow balancing the influence in the, uh, in the association. Um, um, it will compo be composed of research funding organizations, research performing and service providing organization as an end as a catch all other organizations. Um, there will be an opportunity um, also for each country to have one or more members in the association. Um, and the countries will be able to appoint one as one single member to act as its mandated organization with uh, responsibility to represent the national interest and also have specific uh, voting rates on strategic, um, on strategic aspects. I will skip the other slide. I will briefly, I, I should briefly highlight um, there will be fees. Um, so um, it will be, it will be most, it will be necessary to understand um, that there is an association budget uh, that uh, needs, uh, that needs uh, to be financed uh, by the members. Um, the working assumption is uh, that the association would require at its outset um, a budget of approximately 2 million euros uh, per year. Um, and the fees will be determined by the association um, and uh, the detail will be recorded uh, by in, within uh, the, the bylaws. So the association is financed with the fees of its members um, but also might receive income from other areas such as subsidies, grants, donations, and uh, bequests uh, per, uh, potentially. In terms of the next steps, we have uh, we are discussing the the statutes um, with the governance board, the executive board, and uh, candidate funding members uh, have made uh, have invited their input um, during the time from 5th to 18th May. Um, on the 17th June, uh, we are looking at uh, sign-off uh, of the statutes. In parallel, many other uh, many other um, activities are going on, um, and are supported uh, by legal professional advice. Um, so, review of the uh, of the statutes take into account of the governance board preparation of the bylaws, uh, translation of final version uh, of the statutes into French, the interaction with the notary. Um, additional formalities and also investigations of VAT and uh, tax uh, tax aspects. 
So that was a bit rushing through these um, elements. I'm sorry again for, for the delay in the, in the start. And um, I'm not quite sure how we, how, we, how we are with the time and uh, what could be appropriate. Well, it's, uh, Lydia here, it's 15 minutes to one. So we are yeah. a, a little bit uh, short on time. And I, I have invited everybody to submit questions or comments through the chat window. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rupert, for this very comprehensive um, round of uh, activities led by the Sustainability Working Group. I would like to thank uh, everybody in the Working Group for their excellent commitment and uh, nice work so far. Now, uh, there is a question here from uh, Rene Belso. It says, EOS without resources, you say business model and marketplace considerations are pending. Are there at this point in time absolutely no thought on this? Are there any vague scenarios at least? I'm, I'm not quite I'm not quite sure I, I, I completely understand the, the question could could uh... it, it says I, I, okay, I will read it completely. It says, since EOSC requires resources, data, as well as infrastructures to be free at the point of use, who will finance the open, free, Europe-wide resource pool and how so? So maybe maybe I can say a few words out of the, the business model studies. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay, René. Look, um, as, as uh, Rupert said very briefly, when he mentioned the list of studies uh, that the working group is running, there are two studies that refer to business models. The first one is already ongoing and is a study to identify the operational costs of the what we call the minimum viable EOSC. That is the core set of services that will uh, researchers should have access to. They include, as you may have seen in the Tinman report, they include protocols for fair data, include uh, access um, uh, to data, person, uh, persistent identifiers, etc. So there is uh, these uh, uh, two consultancies, they are partnered to try and uh, structure what are the main costs associated to these services. And they are doing so by contacting existing infrastructures that provide this type of services. And based on that, they will do an estimation of what these costs will be. The second study, which is going to start very soon, is indeed on, um, or first of all, on what are the um, financial lines that could be used to fund these services, i.e. Uh, interoperability of data and access to data, but also beyond what is the minimum viable product. So the minimum core of services is about enlarging the variety of services that EOS will do. So we don't have an estimation yet, but the studies will provide the estimation uh, during the course of the year. Normally the study one about the identification of the operational costs of the minimal viable EOSC will be ready in July so summertime and the second study probably will be ready by October, November, uh, normally in time for the EOSC stakeholders forum in October. Maybe, I, thank you, Lydia, that's, that's, that's excellent. I think uh, what, we, what, we, what we probably should also highlight, I mean, I'm not sure I completely understand the, the question correctly, but I think we should not assume EOSC starts with, uh, with, with nothing or from, from zero. So the idea is, is to bring together the different services uh, in terms of data and, and, uh, and, uh, and services together um, and, and federate those in, into EOSC. Um, of course, it is clear that, uh, that this requires additional work and, and many of, uh, those of, of you in, in the audience have been working um, on these different aspects for, for many years. Um, so I think it is it's not so, we should not assume that there's nothing to start, but EOSC has an important role and the EOSC legal entity has an important role to help shape and to help coordinate um, how these different uh, pieces are, are put together. 
Uh, so I think that's that's one of the that's one of the major aspects um, of this uh, of this work in the legal entity of, of the association. Sorry. Then is another, there is another question here uh, by uh, Volker Beckman from CNRS. The school programmed EOSC's diagram. Where is the feedback possibility for the users? Where is the stakeholders forum? That's a good question. Um, and we have, to, we have to appreciate this, this diagram is, is just presenting a very fragmented and, and, and a very rough uh, sketch. Um, the EOS Association has, um, as one of the, the main activities, um, the work on the on the SRIA. Um, it has standardization. I think one of the other activities is uh, is working on standardization on on making sure that the rules of participation are are are, uh, are brought on board and, and and considered, and and to be put in place and enforced. Um, the dialogue, um, the dialogue with the with the stakeholder forum, will be an important part of the communication and dissemination activity of this association. So there is there is a strong role to put to put uh, to put this input on board. Um, otherwise, I mean, without the community, um, the association will never be able to to successfully set the standards and and to. Um, to 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 engage with uh, with the wider EOSC. So the association is of course not the whole of EOSC. So it's is one part, one important part of EOSC that will be able to grow. That will hopefully be able to bring on board more and more and more partners uh, and stakeholders involved. But the input uh, clearly comes uh, from the uh, from from the wider community, such as the stakeholder forum, and that's an important role of the association. To make that happen, and uh, okay, I hope that answers the question. I also I'm trying to see if it is possible to allow Rene to put the question himself, and in the meantime, I receive the uh, answer to that whether that is possible because I'm not in command of uh, of the uh, giving word to people. Uh, let's move to the next uh, question I have in line, which is uh, from. Uh, Leonard Stoy at EUA, at the European University Association. How do you cope with an, the uncertainty for potential members regarding the status of their country's association to EU programs? Has this been discussed? This is being this is being discussed, um, and we are um, we are we are trying. I mean, there is discussions with with the with the governance board how we can be as, as flexible as possible. Um, I cannot um, I cannot confirm that these discussions have been have converged yet, um, but uh, certainly this is on the radar, so that we that we make uh, that we make this uh, as open as possible. Um. There is another question from uh, Jean-Claude Bergelman. Hello, Jean-Claude. He says, uh, who will be responsible when, when it doesn't work? Well, I hope if it doesn't work. And what will be the real life key performance indicators? For example, volumes of data being reused? I think one of the, I mean, I. I think that's 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 a very, that's a very that's very important two two questions. Um, I, I will probably start with with the second one. So, what is it what is it that that we will need to bring on board in terms of measuring the the success? Um, I think the staff working document has uh, has uh, already proposed uh, some some key performance indicators. And I think there there will be a complex uh, set of uh, of those need to need to be implemented. I think it, we will need to look at uh, at aspects such as which which data um, are, are brought on, brought on board. Um, how broad is uh, is is the representation of of the different domains? Um, how much is this data being reused? Um, uh, how uh, um, uh, how much how much publication um, are benefiting from uh, from from work in, in uh, from from the data in EOS and services available to EOS and many many more. Um, I think on one of the slides uh, that I had uh, and that is uh, the work in, in the Tinman 
uh, report, um, some of this, the, there will be an important role of um, matrix, of a matrix framework uh, represented through the ERS core. So that will be an, an important element to already from the beginning start monitoring the success. And uh, of course, I mean, this will depend um, also on the work uh, within the, the, com the different communities. Uh, and maybe the, the, uh, the, the work from within the, the cluster projects and, and the, the reg regional cluster projects um, can help um, to shape these uh, these metrics and, uh, and and try to find uh, find synergies uh, on that area. Who will be responsible? I think um, I think it's a it's a clear responsibility for all of us, and we're not quite sure um, there will be one that there will be one organization that that can be blamed in the end, since this is an important uh, joint effort with uh, very uh, with with a with, with a very broad variety of our stakeholders. Um, I think it can only it can only only be the many of us that make it happen. Um, it is too big uh, for for just one uh, to to be blamed. Uh, but uh, I think we need to be acting very actively together uh, to make it happen. I think I should add, uh, Rupert, that in last week when we were discussing the partnership proposal. Uh, in the partnership proposal, which we will make public, I don't know, sometime in uh, when is, uh, the time comes by, there will be a, a large, quite a large number of key performance indicators at several levels. It will be a mixture of uh, more countable indicators such as volume of data used or deposited or, or accessible, sorry, not deposited, accessible. Um, but also there will be a number of qualitative indicators. So it will be a combination of quantitative and qualitative. And this is all under uh, discussion and negotiation with the, um, with the commission. Regarding responsibilities, clearly there will be this uh, partnership and they will be responsible for managing the partnership efficiently in, in collaboration with the uh, member states and uh, the responsibilities that will be attributed to the legal entity plus the stakeholders. So as Rupert said, it will be a shared responsibility uh, if EOSC would, whether EOSC is a success or not, everybody will have their part of responsibilities. I have been told that we can go a little bit over time because we started late. So I, I will try to address all questions that are coming up. Now the next one is by uh, uh, Sean DeWitt. In, she says that there is a trade-off between agility of an organization and size. By inviting board mem board mem I'm sorry, more members, decision-making takes longer and flexibility is reduced. How can this be squared? So, so I think what I mean that's that's a typical problem of, of large organizations. Yeah. I mean what you what you try to do is is uh, try to find a, a construct where you can delegate uh, operational and day to day activities to 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 the executive board um, so that that you have this this one aspect uh, separated. And of course um, it is. It is uh, it is more complex um, with with larger organizations, but at the same time, we need to also see it is still a process um, to get there. Um, we should not. Um, I mean, of course, we are enthusiastic to bring together uh, this uh, this association and to let it grow and let it blossom. Um, if we just what is what is the alternative? Should we limit this? I don't I don't see that. I mean. Um, what will what could also happen and, and it, it is quite it is quite unsure how it will happen if you could imagine that uh, not every organization will will join individually you could you could see depending on how things go um, that there is umbrella organizations joining instead of uh, certain um, individual organizations I mean that could be the, the case for uh, certain uh, types of universities uh, where you where you have a representing uh, umbrella uh, organization that uh, that that could join. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, I think we need to be prepared uh, for 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 a number of, of things to happen. 
um, and we just try to build the, the framework uh, that, that it can happen so that uh, we are that we see a broad representation as broad as possible. I think this has always been mentioned uh, that this is one of the main aims uh, that it is that it can grow, that it can um, bring on board the, the vast um, uh, experience that, that is existing uh, across the European landscape. Um, and we have to face these challenges and then with a flexible arrangement of the association, make sure that um, the the association is wise enough to implement the appropriate measures so that it can deal with uh, with the growing with organic growing of uh, of of its of its bodies good thank you rupert i will move to i will move to a question raised by mark van de sanden um oh, wait a minute before i move to mark uh can i ask the colleagues the colleagues in Trust IT to give uh, the word to René so he can ask his questions. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Uh, yes, and do it now. René, can you tell us whether okay. you. Uh, yes, please. Right. It's concerning this uh, resources across border. So I can't see that happening uh, more than on a very small scale unless there is a viable financial model for this. Somebody has to pay for the scaling of resources across border. And where does that come from? Did, did that go through? Yes, thank you. Yes, it's fine. Uh, Rupert, do you want to give a response to that? Can you be a little bit more precise, Lenny? Okay, so let's say you have a storage infrastructure or another attractive infrastructure and somebody from a different country wants to use it, which I believe is the whole idea of yours. Then the scaling of that infrastructure will entail costs. So how does a provider get cost recovery when providing to, let's say, foreigners or outsiders so most national infrastructure providers are financed to serve their population of researchers and institutions. But if a, a but first problem is if a, if a service is popular and immensely popular from the rest of Europe, who is going to pay for this? And the second thing is the competitiveness. I think that's what a, if that's, one that's national a infrastructure outcompetes yeah. another national infrastructure? Is that okay, or is there protectionism here? Honestly, we don't know yet. Um, there is there's studies ongoing to to support this. Um, I think there might be. I mean, there might be different. There might be different barriers, as you say. There might be policy barriers. There might be uh, legal barriers that that not even all of the the infrastructures can participate in uh, in providing services to to outside to users outside of the country. So these so these barriers first need to be addressed uh, or are seen and, and potentially be removed so that uh, that these things can can happen um, is it okay that uh, that a certain that a certain service um, can be out computed by other uh, out, out competed by others um, in theory um, i think there should be there should be comp uh, i think that there should be competition there should be active competition um, whether or not it is uh, whether or not this this will lead to a, to a situation where um, a massively attractive service uh, outcompetes the others that that is something that still needs to be found and what are the con consequences um, I would hesitate to to comment uh, to comment on this but I think I would certainly like to see um, a, a, a competitive uh, framework uh, where users really have a possibility to see different uh, components available to 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 serve their needs, I think that is I think that could be that could be a momentum uh, that that EOS, uh, bring uh, that EOS could, could bring to the to the to the play. Um, how the the financing um, how the financing could could work that is sub uh, subject to to further studies and it's not completely understood. Um, there is um, there has been uh, there has been thoughts about. Uh, virtual access, uh, virtual access me mechanisms to uh, to fund the the additional uh, the additional um, service uh, um, fraction. 
um, to which extent this uh, this is appropriate uh, and needs to further sh uh, needs f to be shaped further. Um, we will we will see. Okay, good. Thank you, Rupert. And now I go to the question by uh, Mark van der Sanden. What would be your proposed relationship and collaboration between the EOSC legal entity and Infra EOSC 03, which is currently in preparation? How we explore that? I, I, I think, I think in, in terms of, I mean, Infra EOSC 3 is, 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 um, is uh, is a, is a, is certainly a work and and uh, is, is certainly an activity um, that can help shape um, uh, um, can can help with with shaping uh, the different um, sectors of uh, of EASC. Um and it would be important uh, to understand how this how this could be done how certain standardization activities service provision activities can happen. Uh, in the end, I think what we what we need to make sure is that the association, while it is initially only will be mainly focus on uh, on, on shaping the the SWIA, will also have a, a mandate um, to to see how the different activities uh, activities um, really propagate and and how this the strategic impact of uh, what's being discussed um, within the within the association and within the par uh, within the partnership really can make an, can can uh, can provide an influence on the shaping of uh, of the EOS. so i think there is an important uh, there is an important role um, of, uh, of of a, of joint activities um, how services could be provisioned uh, both in the EOS core and the EOS exchange um, um, area on uh, on, on more thematic services, how can these uh, these things be be financed, be structured? How can they be aligned? Um, uh, how can uh, services be uh, activities be, be be standardized? How can fair data practices be implemented? The rules rules of participation being shaped. Um, so there is a there's a there's a strong role to to allow collaboration uh, across these things. Um, I think in the and also what needs to be made sure is um, that the EOS association and that needs to be um, studied whether this is legally possible but i think in terms of these projects that the future work program uh, of the commission will fund um, i think it would be used very useful if there is different if there's hooks in the in the grant agreements uh, in terms of or in, in terms of memorandum of, of understanding uh, so that um, that the EOS Association has some sort of a grip um, into these projects and and to to see whether they deliver appropriately in terms of um, what the association tries to bring forward in shaping the agenda. Okay, Rupert. Uh, for the sake of time, maybe I will I will rush a little bit on the questions. Maybe we can provide very short questions for those who are still present. And I, there is a, a several people who are saying that we are running over time and that whether we could uh, write them um, short written answers. But maybe just to, to give an opportunity for those who can stay longer to hear about these uh, responses, I will go through what are very different questions because some of them are kind of similar. But there is one question by Sean DeWitt saying that fair data is not black and white. So saying that it will only serve fair data is somewhat vague at the best. At best, yeah, I guess. I, I, would, I would just say, I would just say we we need we we need some pragmatism, and 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 I think Sean is is very well aware of this. Mm. Um, we will we will we will try to we will all need to try to make a pragmatic approach to bring together and to build from what we have, and uh, and then iteratively make it. Make it, make it, and, and shape it, shape it further. Mm. There is no. They, they, I mean, if we just try to be uh, w to wait until we reach perfectionism in each single domain until they can provide their data, I'm not quite sure. I mean, that's that's just my personal opinion. But mm. I'm not quite sure this this will result in in uh, in, in a very uh, strong momentum on, of uptake. So some some pragmatism is is necessary. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I, 
I think it's more of a comment than a question by Fotis Karayani saying that uh, they, um, there should be a personalized dashboard for end users with the smart features, including AI based training and learning. And that there was something already proposed in um, ERG back in 2015. So we could perhaps should look into that uh, as, a, as, a, as a, re a background resource. There, there um, will be, I'm sorry, there, there, will be, there, will be, there will be user help desk um, and similar components um, included in, hopefully in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in this horizontal air score component. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that should be useful. Um, there is an activity uh, with the um, with the ERSC uh, training skills uh, working group uh, looking at, at those aspects. I think that's of course very important. Yeah. Yes, good, thank you. Then uh, a suggestion from CESDA who says that they would be in favor of a larger group of founding members just to ensure representation and to ensure uh, uh, a good executive uh, board uh, representing a larger number of stakeholders. That I think sense. I think that's an important question, and we should we should really um, we, we should really make sure. So we are currently discussing with candidate founding members, and mm. and those is needs to be distinct uh, needs, needs to be distinguished from the founding members. Um, we have not, first of all, the, the working group, nor the working group, nor the task force have selected those. So the, the suggestions came uh, from the governance board and, and the executive board. Um, so, and, uh, and, and I think it needs, to be, it needs to be clear that those um, will, maybe not all of them will be the ones that, that go to the, actually go to the notary and, and will be the, the founding members. Um, this is this is this is something that uh, that still needs to happen, and okay. currently we don't have a clear view of actually who will be the actual founding members. Mm. That is that is still some work to be done. Thank you, Rupert. From Judy de Lamar, uh, a recommendation to keep EOSC as open as possible regarding innovation, i.e., uh, keeping uh, um, an open mind on new options and standards uh, in the market to adapt as quickly as possible. Um, then I move quickly down just to make sure I try to cover most of the questions. Martin says that regarding the power of member states to designate an institution as a mandated organization, how it is ensured that this organization coordinates with other member organizations from that very same member state. That's a, that, this is for sure in, in a very in, very important question for, for important. the member states to, to, to solve, absolutely. Um, I, I, would not, I, would not, I would not come up with, with any recommendations, but I think um, there is an opportunity with the mandated organizations to shape um, the, the, the agenda across, uh, across a member state and, and to, to further synergize uh, the, the processes towards open science. Um, we appreciate and, and we completely understand that in particular with some of the member states, uh, it might be that, that this, this might be a challenging process. Uh, absolutely mm -hmm. aware. Good. Um, a question from Vanessa Proudman about the tension between the goal to, uh, of open research and uh, funding the facilitator, the facilitation of discovery, access, reuse of the material that is open and free. So will those who pay more have a greater voice in governance and what structures are in place to design good governance representing the community? So I think, Very so I think, yeah, I mean, there will be there will be there will be more influence um, from via the, the mandated organizations uh, as as I said as I said uh, as I highlighted, but there will be also a very broad representation so to, uh, for for a large variety of uh, of um, um, of voting issues uh, across uh, the whole uh, the whole uh, um, general assembly. So I think there is a quite balanced framework. And I think it would be a little bit too detailed if we go if we go really into to the specifics. Um, but as I see the statutes framework right now, I think there's a quite balanced uh, approach on how 
um, the breadth of the stakeholders will be heard and at the same time uh, the member states have um, a say on, on, on preserving their agendas and, and, and to see how they can align with, with their own activities uh, on a national level. Uh, quickly moving down to questions, a question by Per Oster that I can answer myself. Yes, governments cannot be in the legal entity. The legal entity is composed of other legal entities that are non-for-profit or even for-profit, but they have to be an independent legal entity. Member states have the, um, the, the, the partnership uh, to be a part of it. It will be the steering board we're composed of member states. That's the place for member states. That's why there is this mandated organizations in the legal entity, but no member states as such in the legal entity. Uh, Ivan Marek, is, um, what is your view on the current mix of international pan-European infrastructures and the research infrastructure legal entities and their members coming from member states? So uh, this is, if they can be candidate founding members. Well, basically that goes into the same direction. Uh, any legal entity can be a potential founding member or join afterwards. I, just a clarification, uh, organizations that are not founding members and organizations that are founding members are meant to have the same rights and duties. There will be exactly. no difference in that, that, that you must okay, be there very yeah, clear. The point of my question is not there. The point of my question is the logic of mixing membership organization with the members in the new membership organization. So if my organization is in membership of one research infrastructure, ERIC or E infrastructure on pan-European level, and then we end up in the same new legal entity, new government, don't you find this is uh, there is some conflict of interest, perhaps, or, or mixing? Uh, my point is that this is at least not clear to me yet why we mix membership institutions that are part of pan-European REITs and e-infrastructure institution legal entities, and then we end up in the same category in the EOSC legal entity. If we don't separate those, I am fully supportive of categorization. Institutions coming from member states, be it mandated or not mandated, at the same time are also members of pan-European research and mm. uh, research true. infrastructure and e-infrastructure organization. So basically, to avoid double membership presentation, etc., I think we should be clear. Uh, personally, I can live with the um, uh, EOSC being a sum of all uh, data producer research infrastructure uh, and the e infrastructure organization in Europe have a separate category or, or a body inside the whole structure of governance of EOSC. And uh, on the other side, having enlarged membership for all. Uh, individual researchers or institutions, etc., etc., and the third category could be member state mandated organization. But mixing them as a founding member at this point, I don't see a message. So, so Ivan, I'm not quite sure. I mean, the the concept of a founding member is not a specific category. I mean, it's that that's 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 for sure. So. A founding member can can come from any of these categories that have been proposed, and and the categories that we have proposed have been discussed with both the governance board extensively, during various meetings, um, and also with uh, with the executive board and, and probably also others. Um, so I think I think we need to I mean we need to find a way to 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 find a compromise. Um, if this is not appropriate for all of uh, for all of the stakeholders this 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 we appreciate and at the same time we need to also understand um if we categorize the, the categorization is is a is a way to preserve influence within the within the grow uh, within the growing um, and to balance influence with a growing uh, organization so the organization can be can can grow um 
potentially by by a certain category just overwhelming the, the whole organization and by introducing this categorization model we think we uh, we we find a way um, how the organization itself uh, has a has a, a mechanism to balance this and and to and to and to just uh, just uh, introduce um, some um, so, some balance uh, across uh, across the different fields. Um, I'm not quite sure we can we can completely optimize everything for for everybody. Okay, thank you. I think that I will just uh, drive this session to a, a nice close. It's all, it's one twenty almost. Maybe just one addressing just one last question, saying who will perform the second study on business models that we don't know yet. Uh, there will be a um, uh, a scouting for uh, possible uh, organizations who could do it and it will be all allocated. One very last question, uh, virtual access uh, does not solve the issue of cost recovery. It's a simple way of accounting costs. In the end, someone needs to pay for scarce resources provided by service providers. Is there a concrete time frame to discuss and address this? And that should be the last question. I think is important aspects will happen of this of these questions will happen when we carry out these uh, these studies uh, on on AIS exchange. I would say. Okay, very good. So uh, let's draw this question this question and answer session to an end. We have gone clearly over time, twenty minutes, but I think uh, the quality of your questions does reflect the the, the need to have to address this over time. We have collected a few additional ideas that we will take now into account in our uh, development of the sustainability report and the business models and the legal entity development. And I think we can close it here. Rupert, do you want to say something else? No, I think that was a perfect closure. Thank you, yeah. Lydia. And sorry again for the technical issues uh, for, for, for joining this session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for all your interest. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a nice lunch. I think uh, we now uh, resume at 2.30, no? I think. Yes, yes. Very we will, good. We will meet at 2.30 and please connect a little bit 10 minutes early just for avoid in case of technical issue. Thank you. And, uh, bye. Have a nice lunch. Have a good lunch. Thank you, Lydia and Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo. <clears throat> bye.